Mm. Leftover candy and a mediocre episode of American Horror Story. What a Thursday. Hello and welcome to About Last Night. My name's EJ Marino and this is the show where I talk about the movie I saw last night. Yes, this week is going back to my usual weekly video. I am talking about episode eight of American Horror Story Apocalypse. American Horror Story Apocalypse. Who knew even an episode with only Michael Langdon could still bore me. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit hard. I like this episode. I got some hate on my comments last week for saying I didn't love the episode. Okay, I appreciate last week's episode a little bit more because this one was just okay. I love the Langton character. I love finding out some of his more, his own personal journey, his journey to find himself. I like any of these like coming of age, trying to find myself in the world stories. It's fun, it's interesting, especially when you're the son of Satan. That's a whole different ball game we don't normally see. We don't get to see angsty like Damien in the Omen being like, oh, no one loves me, daddy doesn't like me. I didn't get angsty teenage emo Damien, but now with Langdon, I'm getting full on Satan baby going through his whole hot topic phase and I'm into it. I'm digging that. The episode as a whole, I was just another time it ended and I was just like, but that's it? Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's kind of awesome that I'm craving episodes of horror story and I'm like, mm, but what about next week? Next week should be better. That's actually a good thing because now I'm hyped for each week, but living in this moment, living right after this episode, I thought it was just okay. I had fun. There was times I like laughed out loud. Sandra Bernhardt's in here. I love seeing Cody Fern as uh, Michael Langdon. I like this episode. Just, it just felt mediocre. It just felt run of the mill. And once again, that's not a pure insult. Sometimes I think we live in this world where things have to be amazing or horrible. Things can live in the middle. And that's where this episode is, purely in the middle. The events of last week's episode really kicks off this week's episode. We now have Michael finding all of the bodies of the charred, the two warlocks, and Miss Mead. That was actually like a heartbreaking scene for him. I'm really loving uh, Langdon's acting, like the, the character's acting in this because I get it. I feel him. I'm glad that he's not just this one dimensional, just evil satanic dude and that's it. No, he has layers to him. I like seeing that. And this opening really got to see all of his layers really quickly. We got to see the sadness and then we got to see him go meet Cordelia who was shading the hell out of him, basically being like, you're not a bad boy, we can still save you. And he, that even made Michael more pissed. So I liked seeing that aspect. I liked seeing this character grow. That's what this whole episode was, was me getting to see way more a Langdon as a person and as a character than I thought I would. I liked that. I thought this intro was strong. I thought actually up until when we go to the like California fake Silicon Valley, that's where the episode loses me a little bit. But up until that, I really enjoyed it. After Michael Langdon finds all the charred bodies, he basically just turns to his father and goes, Satan, help me. I don't know what to do. So he goes on this like little mini retreat, just trying to get like a good like woodsy vacation, figure out what he needs to do. Maybe like Snow White it, talk to a few birds. The bird might be like, kill them all. I don't know, but that's what he was trying to do. So he goes into the woods, goes there, makes a whole pentagram. I was like, I'm not leaving this pentagram until you tell me, hey dad, pick up the phone. I need your help. Daddy doesn't answer for four days, sends him nothing, which I was just like, I, I, I wonder what this test is all about. I wonder if this was to see if Langdon was really serious about this, because they do tempt him. They tempt him with food. They tempt him with an angel who says God loves Langdon and it's not bad, like he's not that bad. What was that about? Cordelia said that and then this angel said that. I'm curious if we're gonna find Langdon by the end of the season regrets what he's done, maybe goes and sees the light, who knows? But I thought that was interesting that they presented him with that. And then they presented him with a goat, which is why he's here. This is Black Philip. Black Philip. I would say his cousin was here, because Black Philip ain't dying because of no like little white boy Satan baby. No. Black Philip was just like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, go, my cousin. Black Carl, I guess. So yeah, Black Carl, that's what we'll call him. Black Carl the goat gets there, Langdon sacrifices him. And to me, that's when Langdon was just like, oh, I even sacrificed a goat who I thought was maybe my dad and that didn't work. So he is even more lost. So he just 
stumbles and walks around until he finds a satanic cult. And this is where, to me, my highlight of the episode really is. So Michael Langton stumbles on the satanic cult. He's basically like, these guys are a bunch of posers. Like, they ain't sinning. They ain't doing the, lo the Dark Lord's work. What's going on? Sandra Bernhardt, who is an amazing actress, I loved her. She used to be on Roseanne, worked in the diner back in the day. That's how you can, if you remember her, I'm like, who is she? That's her. I liked her as this like leader of the satanic cult. She's basically telling them, sin, inspire me. This one girl's like, I stole $100 from my register, and she's just like, okay. I need you to like steal $100, shoot your manager, and then like backhand a grandma. No. No, and even when she says what she's done, Langdon's like, girl, that's it? You stole from a retirement home and gave it to the NRA? He's like, my dad doesn't even like the NRA. Like, it was so funny to see him be like, these group of losers, until he finds one sweet old lady. This older lady finds him, sees that he hasn't ate in a while, sees that he looks dirty as hell, and she lets him in. As the true satanic way, you help somebody out. <laughs> That was, that was too much for me to say. But yeah, I just thought it was cute that like she like kind of took him in and was just like, look, what's wrong? What, what's your story? And he's just like, my dad's not answering, you know, to typical dad issues. I'm a gay boy with no dad. What am I going to do? Until she finds that 666 on the back of his head. I actually thought he was going to end up killing her or like doing something like that. But she actually served as a, like a fake Miss Mead. She was there as this woman in Langdon's life to help him out. Because honestly, his, his original birth mother tried to kill him. He doesn't really have a family. He doesn't really have anything like that. Even his dad is the satanic presence. He's not there. He's, he's not picking him up from school. Like, that's what I thought was really interesting. Is he, he, he goes to these, like, womenly roles who need to help him or need, he needs their help. And I think it's interesting that it's a, it's a two-way street. A lot of these women want to help him, especially when they find out he's the Antichrist and they're like, Oh, praise the Antichrist. And then, you know, he's just lost, though. He's a child still. I find that interesting. We're like, oh, my God, the satanic child. Oh, God. He's a, he's a kid. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's still lost. And that's what this episode was, was him trying to find his place. He needs Miss Mead. He needs to know what the hell his dad wants him to do to end the world. That's what his journey was. And he figured it out this episode. Pretty surprised of how, like, bam, 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 quick, done, done. Things happen in this episode. Oh, my favorite thing. Okay, let me mention this older lady. Forgot to get her name. If you know her name, let me know down in the comments below. But she's talking about selling her to soul to Satan. And that's when Langdon, like, peeks up and was like, maybe I'll show her my little 666 mark. Cool. Her selling her soul. She could do all the heroin she wants and never gets addicted, I guess. Which seems like, though, the cokeheads we see later are very addicted. So I'm interested to see, like, what the selling of the soul and what God, you know, what Satan does to, like, Mm, you can have that, but I'll take that. So curious of that. And then she also, the best, gets to have, what was it? It was Brad Pitt Wednesdays and uh, Ryan Reynolds Fridays. Mm, what would be mine? I would pick, okay, I'm watching Sabrina. I want, like, Ross Lynch, who plays Harvey Kinkle. He can be Monday. Tuesday's Tom Hardy. Wednesday's Tom Hardy. Ooh, Thursday's Post Malone. That's my Satan. Hey, Satan, if you can hear me, I'm selling my soul. I just want to date Post Malone. Help me. But yeah, I just thought it was cute that he was like, oh, she's serious. She sold her soul. So basically, once he finds out that she is connected to the devil, she takes him to the church. Oh, boy. Oh, this is when, like, all of them are like, we're sacrificing these two good people. Let's do this. And then, which is odd. I know the Church of Satan has been pissed at this season. They're not really known for these human sacrifices or anything like that. So it is weird to keep seeing it happen, but whatever. So they get to the Church of Satan. Sandy Bernhardt is doing her great monologue again, basically being like, sin, do this. We're going to kill these babies. Oh, no, no. Langdon's like, no, let me kill them. I am the true Antichrist. Sits both their throat at one time. That was com two heads. That, that was hard to do. I was just like, he's going to slit them both. Same time. Okay. Like seeing that. So then after that, he gets worshipped by this Church of Satan. I like this because he doesn't seem to be one to like to be worshipped. He doesn't like the groupies. He doesn't like this whole vibe. And I think that's really interesting. Usually you would think someone who is the son of Satan has all this pride, all this ego. He does not. Really cool to see that he's just like, mm, back off, don't worship me. I just need Miss Mead. I need Miss Mead. Which sends him on a journey that the nice older lady sends him to these other people who have sold their soul. These fake Silicon Valley, Mark Zuckerberg-ish kids. 
sends them to them to get a robot and maybe some more. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh God, the bowl cuts. I just want to talk about Evan Peters and Billy Eichner's bowl cuts for like 30 minutes. So the older lady drops him off at the uh, Silicon Valley kind of tech thing where they're building the robot, which is where we get the Miss Mead robot. She leaves him off with being like, look, I'm not going to help you out here. They want you. They don't want me. But can you put in a good word for your dad? Like, her, her life is so weird. She just wants to be in the worst layer of hell all day, every day, serving Satan. What a nice older lady. I thought she was so cute. Like, I liked her and Langdon stuff. I just think you get to see him being a lost boy and him needing these mother roles. I thought that was so interesting. So when she drops him off is when the episode, I'm so high up because I love all the Satan-like church stuff, and then we go down a little bit. So we meet Billy Eichner and uh, Evan Peters' character. Didn't really get their names either. Mark Zuckerberg 1, Mark Zuckerberg 2 with ugly, ugly bowl cuts. So they're there. They're massive cokeheads. I mean, coke heads and then they have an assistant a, a receptionist if you will at first the camera pans up and i'm like this is the fourth sarah paulson character we had venable we had cordelia we had billy dean howard do we need another one no not a fourth this is venable we get to see her origin this is the like other uh, as much as i don't like this like robot building segment sing venable be a complete bitch again I missed her. This really also gets to explain what her backstory is, how she possibly met Miss Mead, how she kind of knew about Langdon. I really liked that kind of like little bit of an Easter egg in here. They like planted a seed there, they watered it. I want to see where it grows, how that fully develops with Venable. So Venable is working with Billy Eichner and um, Evan Peters' his characters. They basically sold their soul to devil, do a bunch of coke. I mean, all the coke. They also get to have sex with supermodels and Ryan Reynolds. Equal opportunist lovers, I like that. So really, really cool stuff happening there, I guess. I'm like, I, the idea of it was cool. The execution, I was just like, oh, you're gonna build the Miss Mead robot. You built the Miss Mead robot. The only highlight there is when basically Langdon had to prove himself as Satan, and this one like kind of hooker, escort chick, is like, oh no, I can feel the power, and to prove himself, just lights that hell on fire. Billy Eichner and um, uh, Evan Peters' character is like, oh no, mm -mm. oh he's the real deal. So they go nuts, build him the Miss Mead robot, the best robot they've ever built. I'm seeing her and I'm like, ooh, the future would be crazy if robots like this. I know the sex robots exist and or like Sophie the AI robot, I know they exist, but like seeing one like a Miss Mead terrifies me for the future. I've seen the movie Alien. I'm not here for like the replicants or Blade Runner with the replicants as well. I'm not ready for that. Oh God, the robot thing just maybe, maybe that's why I don't like it. Robots creep the hell out of me. What do you guys think? Are, are we like pro AIs taking over? Anti AIs taking over? That's a season of horror story is the robots taking over. Ryan Murphy, you can have that idea. There you go, babe. In a somewhat blunt and anticlimactic ending, Miss Mead's alive now as a robot. Langdon has her, and she says, but what shall we do now? Episode ends, and I'm like, oh, okay. I just, I wanted a little bit more from this episode. I had fun, I thought the Satan Church was cool, but maybe it is weird to see not having the coven mixed with Langdon, like we did last episode. Uh, we had all the, uh, all the coven, but no Langdon. Now this one was all Langdon, no coven. We need to mix these people. It's the whole story that we're in love with, not just these one characters. I love this whole world of apocalypse. I want to live in it more. Keep it going. Let's don't just stop randomly. Let's keep the momentum because we're doing so good. This is one of the most clean cut, like just straightforward seasons I've seen in a while. Still don't love the narrative where they like started at the end and now we're at the beginning. I don't love that. But for the most part, this season's so good. Do not mess it up these last two episodes. Oh God, please do not mess it up. So what did you think of this episode? Let me know down in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up. Again, to anyone who is subscribing to my channel for these horror story reviews, thank you. It is so fun doing them. I'm having a blasty blast talking about horror story. Thank you for that. Join me for another one next week and after the season finishes, I have said I'm going to be starting Murder House. So if you want to watch a rewatch of Murder House, join me. We'll do it weekly, maybe two times a week. We'll see. Thank you again for tuning in to About Last Night and check out more videos right